Hi everybody, good day to you and welcome back. It's, oh, that's not a good start. Um, all right, well, hey, you know what? If this is your first time here, just welcome. Glad you're here. I know I'm glad to be here. I'm trying to figure out how to get inside of this thing. Giggity. Hmm. That actually just happened. Look at that. Uh, let's put that back. NASCAR. Come on. Really? How much? Haha, I got it. I win. I'm in. All right. All right. As I was saying, 2009 Ford Flex open. Get over there. For what it's worth, this is the SEL trim package. And it has approximately 155,540 miles on the odometer. There it is. Customer states, check engine light, sometimes oil change, washer pump, and vibrates at 50 miles per hour sometimes. So I have brought with me the handy dandy vehicle communication interface. Beep. So let's see if we have any trouble codes. Then we're gonna go out for a ride and uh, try to duplicate their symptoms. And the washer pump does not pump. I have duplicated that symptom. They didn't mention an airbag light. All right, so I've got the scanner over here. It's going to ping all of the modules in this car and uh, give me a complete list of every trouble code that is stored or pending or in history. Uh, while this thing is doing that, I'm gonna go out for a ride and see if we cannot duplicate this uh, vibrating noise, and uh, then we will proceed from there. So stay tuned, this is gonna be a good video. Uh, for the record, the passenger side mirror is held on with a rubber band. Just wanna point that out. So I just went over a few bumps back there in the parking lot, and I, I heard a lot of suspension slash strut noises, and uh, I also heard a very loud banging. Check this out, listen. You hear that? I think the motor is slapping the firewall. Listen to this one. That's, uh, that's not good. All right, game on, proceeding. All right, so we're, uh, we're doing some straight line driving and our steering wheel's uh, off about 15 degrees to the right. This indicates to me there is a geometric suspension alignment problem going on here. Uh, kind of minor considering the stuff we've found so far, like that banging noise down there, but uh, definitely worth noting. The brakes are squeaky squeaky. Go away, mosquito! So we're looking for a, uh, a shimmy or a vibration at around 45 or 50. I felt it earlier. Unfortunately, I did not get it caught on camera. So I'm gonna try one more time to recreate it. Let's see about that vibe at 50. Hope the cops aren't up here. Here's 50. Are you gonna do it? Come on, do it. It's not gonna do it. Because it knows that we're watching. Let's turn around and try it again. some see it shake that's unstable suspension it's probably exacerbated by a broken uh, engine or transmission mount I think that was the banging noise we heard earlier 
Okay, so considering that there is no uh, exterior door handle, we'll just put the window down. That way we don't have to NASCAR over the seat to get back in later. That's the plan. Okay, as expected, there are trouble codes in this car for days. Uh, the, the other modules that don't have codes are the ECM uh, and the transmission. So we've got, let's see, an ABS code, C1963 stability control, inhibit warning. Let's see, we've got a B2290 occupant classification system status, front passenger side. So you B1318, low voltage out of module, that's for the audio entertainment slash navigation audio system with navigation radio, accessory, protocol interface module, sync memory codes one. That's a mouthful. Anti-theft has low voltage. Uh, instrument cluster has low voltage. Let's see here. More low voltage. Lost communication with rear seat. Entertainment module. Let's see, the seat module for the driver door or driver seat has some trouble codes. Heated mirror feedback, passenger mirror vertical feedback. Low voltage at one of the modules again. Surprise, surprise, tire pressure monitor system has a trouble code. Low voltage at module. Hmm. I bet you it's either got a bad junk battery or someone just put one in it. Let us pop it in the hood and we'll investigate such things. Okay, not a new battery. We'll test that later. Here, let's try to capture that banging noise. I'm gonna go hop back in the cabin and uh, power brake this a little bit. And we're gonna see if we can see this engine flopping around. In. The handle's broken off. It, yeah, the handle's over there on top of my toolbox. That just showed up. It's broken, but it's, it's here. Anyway, go. Yeah, go ahead. All right, go to reverse. Yes, there's one of them over here. Do it again. Yeah, it's, it's this mount over here underneath all this stuff right right there. Some kind of transmission mount, I think. Okay, all right, man, you can shut it down. Thank you. Moving on up. It's a case of the more you look, the more you find. Watch this. That's worn steering parts. all the way up. If I could draw your attention to this inner tie rod here, I will reshake the wheel and you guys can see this thing flippy flopping around. Watch this. That's a very worn inner tie rod. Uh, the way that works is this rod goes into the steering rack and it's a ball and socket kind of joint. So you've got the ball on the rod running in the rack has a socket that that ball fits in and it's allowed to articulate and move around. It's not supposed to move in and out. So that's definitely uh, excessive wear. Hey look, I found a new oil pan. Look at that. Brand new, they just had this put in. Nice job on the sealant. All right, let's find some more loose stuff because I know it's here. We're over here at the left front wheel the driver's side and I hear this loud creaky noise look at that mark the metal shim hardware for the brake pads is touching the rotor it's not installed straight 
Oh, maybe I fixed it. Nope, there it is. There it is again. All right, that's wrong. Uh, let's pull those wheels and do a brake inspection too. All right guys, so considering that last week was the week of declines, what do you think we're gonna do this week? Is this gonna be some declined action? Or are we going to actually service a car? Uh, for the record, I had a brake inspection on a Mercedes this morning. Uh, it needed rear pads and uh, that was declined also because they said it, it cost too much money. I suppose folks don't realize that the, uh, the days of $49 brake pad installations are over with. All right, so what do we got here? We have a car that's been parked for a while. See all that rust? Hang on, hang on, light. There you go, see all that rust right there? It's in the shape of a pad. That means that this rotor was sitting over here on that pad and became rusted. I do feel some vibes while driving this. Mm, eight millimeter pad thickness, that's okay. I would recommend reconditioning these on the brake lathe. That's what I think we should do. Let's check the fronts. Loud noises. Some of you were reading out in the comments saying I was throwing people's wheels. That's not hurting anything. Okay, these front rotors look really good. Pad thickness is in excess of 10 millimeters. These are good. It's just that uh, little metal clip that someone did not install properly. If they want that fixed, you have to take this apart and redo the clips. Huh? No big deal. I did feel a slight bit of play in this inner tie rod as well, so I'm gonna recommend replacing the tie rods. Uh, we need to replace this transmission mount up here for that banging noise, and it needs a replacement door handle, uh, along with the brakes that we found out. Okay, we have the right front wheel off. We're in the wheel well, looking at the tie rod still, and I found that this is not attached. Well, it's not attached very well. Now we can clearly see that ball and socket joint right there. Look at this. See that flopping in and out? It's moving closer. Yeah, now you can see. Watch it. Excessive wear right here between the ball and the socket. Here, let's diagnose that wiper, washer, spray, not spraying condition. Customer states washer motor. Okay, it's not empty. Okay, so I managed to get some jumper leads on the connector for the wiper motor. And I ran those around over top, connected them to a meter. The meter is over here propped up. And I'm gonna go ahead and actuate the, uh, the washer pump and we're gonna see if we have voltage here. If we have voltage here, that means that it's being commanded on However, the pump itself is not running, therefore the pump will have to be replaced. So, hit the button right now. And we have battery voltage. Diagnosis complete, needs washer pump. All right, we're climbing up in the back seat of this Ford because uh, it is on a lift and the front doors won't open, so we're gonna hang out here in the back. Uh, they want us to look into this airbag code ever so slightly and see if we can uh, figure out what's going on with this. I believe they were mistaking the check engine light with the airbag light. Um, I haven't seen a check engine light on this car, so we're just going to look at the airbag light instead. So, let's revisit that trouble code and see what it says. Again, we've got B2290 occupant classification system status front passenger side, so obviously there is a fault there. Let's just take a Real quick look at the uh, the data. Airbag system component data, that's what we want, yes. Proceeding. What I'm doing is I'm gonna scroll through, see it will give us deployment loop resistance. 
for each one of the uh, components within the airbag system. And we're looking for two to four ohms, let's say. And I'm just reviewing all of this preliminary data to make sure nothing is just standing out at us. Okay, we've got battery voltage. Uh, like that, that's standing out. Passenger airbag deployment loop status activated. That's okay. And we got a winner. Passenger seatbelt load limiter resistance. 565.4 ohms. That's uh, that's way, way out of line. Passenger seatbelt load limiter. All right. Let's go, uh, let's take a look at the passenger seatbelt load limiter and see what's going on. Uh, I don't believe that's for the, the pre-tensioners, which are in the buckle. I think the load limiters are actually the spool that winds up here in the B pillar. Oh. Let's see if we can't uh, maybe find a loose connector or something down there first before we start pulling seats out. Let's see what we got. Mm, got some jumper cables. Remember all those low voltage codes? I recall the dealership times when we'd have a car come in with airbag problems that was fairly newish. You'd find a bunch of stuff like this under the seats and it pushed the wires up into the tracks which uh, broke connectors and whatnot that might be it might not be but we're gonna find out real quick don't need that oh what's this okay that's supposed to connect the harness to the seat Oh, uh oh, what is this? Does my eyes deceive me? Look at that, we found something guys, we found something. We got some, uh, maybe critter damage or rubbing damage, something going on there. Hey, found uh, more damage, look at that. That's just cut clean off now, isn't it? Hmm, all right. Further diagnosis will be required. I need to, I'll have to pull this seat out and uh, see what, what else is damaged. All right, I'm gonna go and write up all the stuff that we found and uh, let our guy know what's going on and we're gonna see what they would like to do about this uh, situation here. Stand by. All right, it looks like my punishment from the car gods is over and my endless string of cars being declined has come to an end. We're going to repair most of the stuff on this car. Starting with the tie rods. Loud noises. Oh, come on. The shaft is spinning in the in the knuckle, not good. Right bar. Here, we'll just stick that in there. Give it some upward pressure. Gravity. Okay, let's push this tie rod in so I can fit some pliers up behind the control arm so I can unthread this from the steering gear. doing uh, both sides, inner and outers. I didn't tell you guys yet, but we're also going to resurface the rotors on the lathe. Imagine that. Not gonna do anything with the airbag. And uh, I think I'm gonna put a washer pump in it too. Having said that, I'm trying to think of some nifty little ways to uh, save us some viewing time and still encompass everything that we're gonna do here. What I'm thinking is I'll pull these tie rods off and then we'll start to disassemble the brakes and we'll move over to the brake lathe. So we'll get some of these rotors set up on the lathe and in this video, I will skip through the, the lathing process 
but I'll make a secondary kind of bonus video that shows the laving process, or the cutting process rather, uh, in real time and in full time without any speed ups or edits. That way, uh, for everybody who wants to see the rotor cutting action, you can. And for those of you who don't want to see it, uh, you don't have to. And of course, I will place the links for the other bonus videos down in this video's description below, in case you don't want to go there now, but would like to go there after this video. Come out. Here it comes. Now there's a, oh, I see the little clamp back there. I gotta get that off. You guys see it? Yeah, way back there. Little silver looking guy. Let's just go ahead and pop that off. If I can get behind it. Come off, I don't wanna break you. I have the tool to put you back on. Aha! Victory! Alright, Ty Rod, you're coming with me. Reverse clickage. Oh, I hit you guys with my Ty Rod. Okay, so we're waiting on parts for that, and while we're here, let's go ahead and start pulling down these brakes. That'll let us get a view on this uh, little clip that's in here that's rubbing the rotor. Impacty reverse clicks. Okay, let's get this out of here. We'll hang it so it's not hanging from the hose. Which one of these, I think I was touching this one and it was rubbing. Oh yeah, there it is right there. Found the culprit. See right there, that little tab? That tab was touching the rotor, making a squealy noise. And the other tab, that one's not far from it. Hmm. Improper tab installation. Okay, what do you think? Is the Milwaukee 3.8s gonna take these uh, caliper bracket bolts out? Kinda no. No, seriously, no. I'll have to do manual reverse clicks. Redlocker that gets you. They got me. Okay, let's uh, get this thing over to the lathe. Stuck. You come unstuck now. Yeah, this is a fairly newish rotor. All right. All right, before we head over there, I'm gonna clean all this rust off of here. I've got a polishing tool for that. Now, last time I used this, everybody asked me what it was called and where I got it. Um, I got it from the USA tool truck. I forget what it's called because I no longer have the packaging, but it is uh, labeled Ken Tool. So I think if you Google Ken Tools, you'll be able to find it. It's, uh, I think they want to call it like a hub resurfacer. Oh, wrong way. I just unthreaded it. It plugs in straight to a uh, half inch drive impact tool. It'll never generate enough force to actually impact, so this is just going to act as a drill. But it does a good job at polishing. And the coolest part, it has a hole in the center to go over your lug nuts. Nice. 
nice and shiny. All right, let's go to the lathe. No rust, no rust. Install complete. Okay, so we're back over here at the car. We need to lubricate these slide pins. These are gross. This one's, oh, that one's stuck. Look at that. Yeah. Yeah, look at that, that's not good. Go ahead and wipe these down, get all that old hardened, dried up grease off. Beautiful. We'll apply some shiny new lubricant. Much more better. I like it. Yeah, that one's stuck. I could probably get it out by hand, but why stress the fingers? These were serviced not long ago. I saw that, that little blue looking grease right there. Makes me wonder why it seized up so quickly. Could be lack of use. We determined that it sat parked for a while in that brake pad shaped uh, rust mark on the rear rotor. Let's get that one clean. Excellent. And we'll do the same thing to the rear caliper brackets as well. This is the equivalent of a full-on brake job without uh, replacing the parts. Bend those tabs in that were sticking out. Those ones are good. And uh, where's that other one at? Gravity. Lube gravity. Maybe that one. There, yeah, that's better. Okay, we are not yet done prepping the front. See, we are over there making a brand new surface on the rotors. And we have this glazed and uh, worn in surface on these, uh, on these pads. So what I'm gonna do is use some uh, rotary sandpaper and just scuff the surface of these pads and maybe chamfer the edges a little bit. That way they break in, or they re-break in. And we have a good relationship between pad and rotor. I am standing upwind. Not much. I'm just gonna pull that surface away. Like so. Repeat three more times for the front. Gravity. Why? Butterfingers. Again, very, very, very lightly. Butamus. These are now prepped to go back in. Okay, so we're still waiting for the slow cut to finish on the other rotor. Let's go ahead and put this caliper bracket on. Send it. Okay, inboard pad. Tell by the witness marks. And outboard pad again, 
witness marks from the caliper. Down there, please. Thank you. Okay. All right, one is done. Be aggressive. Be be aggressive. Woo. Okay, I left some fingerprints on there. Let's uh. Get rid of that. So it stays nice and shiny. Over to the other side. Alrighty, I've got some new tie rod parts here, but I do not have a new bellows boot, so we're gonna have to reuse that one, meaning I'm going to have to disassemble this inner and outer. No big deal, really. Vice click. Yeah, I was really hoping my uh, inner tie rods were gonna come with new do 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 do's and bellow boots at the same time, but um, it didn't quite work out like that. No worries, I'll just take this thing apart, pull the boot off, and then uh, transfer it over to the new tie rod. to shape this properly see how it's kind of caved in we don't want that so we'll use the new rod to poke it back out hopefully oh come on why perfect and I think I have a new jam nut I do Seems visually accurate enough. Uh, where's my new outer? There it is. And we'll thread this guy back on. Lock tight the inside threads. We'll put this back on the rack. Oh, also, I didn't tell you guys yet. Um, we are going to end up replacing that transmission mount that is broken and causing everything to slam around in the engine compartment. Uh, that being said, since uh, this video, even with that cutscene slash bonus video from the brake lathe, is going to run rather long. So what I'm going to do is make this primary feature a two-part. That doesn't fit. And I'll do what I can with the parts that I have here available right now. That will conclude part one, and then part two will probably be the remainder of whatever's left and uh and definitely that uh, that engine mount so if you'd like to see that engine mount issue also take a look down in the video description and i will have each video that is uh following this video listed in clear order with a link there so it will take you to where you would like to be anyway now that that's out of the way let's go ahead and lock tight this inner right here that was kind of too much but i don't care and we'll put this one back on while we're still here in the driver's front. Okay, let's get this uh, inner attached. Come on, you thread. Please, thread. It won't do what I want. Story of my life. 
Ah, there we go. Now we're started. So we'll thread this down by hand. Whoa, flashlight gravity, and I caught it. Went, moved through the matrix. That was great. Anyway, as I was saying, I'll thread this all the way down by hand and then hit it with the pliers again from the bottom side to uh, apply final torquage. Did you attempt to summon me? What? Yeah. Wait, what? Hang on, hang on a minute. I have Loctite. I know that yelling across the building is effective. All right, let's tighten this up. You're breaking it. Click. All right, that's tight. Okay, let's go see if they want. Right back. All right, let's see what we can do about getting this clamp back on. The way that this clamp works is it clips on right here like so. And then you come in with some pliers and you pinch this crimp right here and that squeezes it down and uh, makes a good a good solid clamp. Uh, the hard part is is getting the pliers in. Hope you guys can see what's going on here. Because I can't. <laughs> Come on, you, get in there. Uh, here's the other tire rod. Thank you, sir. Come on, go, 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 ha, ha, got it, all right. So the clamp is clipped. Now I just need to crimp the clamp. I think I can get my tool in. A viewer bought me these, and they're awesome. I think I can get it in right here to make the crimp. There we go. Here, let's see if I can get you guys in here so you can see what's going on. Yeah, that's gonna work. Now you can see. I can see, you can see, we all can see. Oh no, come back. Come back, you. There it is. We got her. Oh, it slipped. Uh, one more, one more pull should do it. Come on, dude. Here it is. Oh, I lost it. Here we go. Begin crimping now. <sighs> Click. Got it. Solid. Get out of here. Now I can just reverse what I just undid. We'll get this outer attached to the steering knuckle and then I'm gonna move back over to more gravity. Wow, this is Butterfinger's day all day. <laughs> I'm gonna move back over to the passenger side. Uh, we'll slap those brakes back together and uh, that's gonna finish this one up. Um, the reason I'm thanking you guys right now for watching this video is because when we move over to the other side, I'm going to do that in super high speed lightning fast motion. Uh, again, being aware of your time and my time and everybody else's time here, I'm trying to uh, encompass video lengths that works well for everybody and to give them the options and choices that they desire. As always, I'd like to thank you guys for watching this video. Before I go, I want to remind each and every one of you to not forget to have yourselves a great day.
Well, that's not working at all, is it? This is like everything the hard way kind of day. Just wow. Begin final torquing sequence now. There. Thanks for watching. See you guys later. Initiating high speed camera footage for time lapse viewing pleasure now. All right, guys. All right, guys, that's gonna wrap it up. Again, check the links down in this video's description, uh, or since you're here to the end, uh, the little box uh, right about here on the end screen, or even the little box that's right up here. Uh, either one of those will take you over to the next part of the repair on this car. So again, thanks for watching. See you guys later. Have a great day, bye. Fool me once, screw that, we're doing something else. Click. Complete.